Hello everyone, my name is Philipp Weber, I'm a PhD student at the Department of Cyberphysical Systems at the University of Siegen. Together with my co-authors Kevin Krings, Julia Niesner, Sabrina Brotesser and my PhD supervisor Thomas Ludwig, we wrote the paper on Food Chatter, exploring the design space of edible virtual agents for human food interaction. Let's get into some details. Recently, there seems to be a lot of discussion about whether robots, AI and conversational agents should be designed to behave like humans or rather like robots. In our work we don't want to focus so much on this specific debate but instead explore a new kind of human to food interaction with a virtual agent that enables direct communication with your food. We therefore introduced the concept of edible anthropomorphic virtual agents and developed the first functional prototype called Food Chatter to explore the design space around this new interaction. Okay, so first let me explain why this is an innovative approach and different from similar approaches. While the term virtual agent is quite well known and often understood as a collective term for conversational agents, chatbots and voice assistants, the term anthropomorphization and anthropomorphic originates from the Greek and is composed of the two words anthropos for person and morphe for shape. This describes the attribution of human traits such as emotions, appearance and intentions to something non-human. It is important to emphasize that everybody has a different tendency to anthropomorphize things and there's a certain field um, or there are certain fields such as marketing that explicitly try to increase empathy by explicitly incorporating anthropomorphic traits into their products. Well-known examples of this are M&M chocolate figures, um, Mr. Potato Head and Bibendum or also known as Michelin Man. There are also several examples of the use of anthropomorphism in the research field of human food interaction. Within this field, anthropomorphism is used to create artificial food companions, to encourage people to reduce food waste, to act as nutrition coaches or to increase food literacy. There are also the works of Wong et al. and Suso Eva et al. that use anthropomorphic design elements to augment food and enable novel experiences. Similarly, we see the interaction concept of our food chatter as an anthropomorphic food augmentation experience. In the following, I will explain how we developed food chatter. To make it possible, we followed a three-step methodological approach, starting with an initial interview study in which we are uh, confronted 90 participants with fictional scenarios about talking food and asked open-ended questions such as what would you think if your food would suddenly start talking to you or what would your reaction be? Although responses varied widely, we identified three broad groups of reactions. While one group found the potential interaction interesting and could imagine both more factual interactions with the food, such as maybe it would convey to me the chef's thoughts, um, and more humorous interactions, such as or maybe the food would tell me uh, something like you were so rude to the waiter, he spit in me before he bought, uh, brought me here. Another group disliked the idea and rejected it quite strongly, sometimes even comparing it to a form of cannibalism as they imagined it as eating a living animal. The third identified group had a very hard time imagining interactions at all, as expressed by one participant's statement, no, I just can't imagine food talking to me, I would think I had gone insane. Especially the last group, but also the split between the other groups, encouraged us to develop a functional prototype to evaluate the interaction during real eating practices. For this purpose, we first held a co-design workshop in which we asked 12 participants to engage in various tasks, such as developing associations with specific foods, assigning and discussing human traits to the foods, visualizing these traits with hand-drawn sketches and designing dialogues for the personified foods. The dialogues were then acted out in groups of two, with one person playing the role of the personified food and the other person playing the human counterpart. Based on the co-design workshop, we designed and implemented four different edible virtual agents and made them accessible through food chatter. 
On the technological side of things, we used Unity and Vuforia for the augmented reality parts, so that we were able to detect the position of the food via QR code markers and to place eyes, arms and mouth assets around the physical dish. To enable text as well as speech in and output, we've chosen dialogue flow in combination with the developed middleware. Currently, Food Chatter only works with German as we wanted to make the evaluation participants as comfortable as possible by using their native language and also to create an accessible experience for younger participants. In the following evaluation study with 21 participants, each participant could try one or two of the edible virtual agents by using Food Chatter. Before the evaluation started, we prepared the food with a QR code, which was already placed in the food and the participants were free to explore the application and to enjoy their food. We used a thinking aloud approach and saved all chat logs to improve the experience in the future. After the participants finished eating, we asked them to fill out a short questionnaire, which mostly served as a starting point for a semi-structured interview with the participants. Let me now turn to the detailed results of our evaluation study. In general, the atmosphere at the table was relaxed and the participants laughed a lot, enjoyed the playful interaction with their food and at the same time were interested in obtaining additional information about their food from our edible virtual agents. Furthermore, we observed that food chatter had an impact on the usual eating habits. At the moment, it is only possible to talk to the meal while holding the smartphone near the QR code marker and this led to extreme situations where participants were so engaged with food chatter that they interacted with their food for more than 10 minutes before they actually started eating their meal. Some participants continue to, uh, continued to use food chatter while eating, while others focused completely on mm, the eating aspect. After the eating process, many of the participants seemed interested in interacting further with food chatter, so they stuck the QR code marker in packaging waste, put it in other food or interacted with it while holding the QR code in their hands. Regarding the conversations participants had with their food, most of them rated the conversation as slightly unnatural, but they seemed interested in learning more about the food as expressed by questions such as, are fries healthy? But there were also less serious questions such as, what is your favorite color? Um, and what is interesting here is that although Food Chatter could not always provide, satis uh, provide satisfying answers to every question, nevertheless, in those cases, uh, these situations were perceived often as amusing. And it also became apparent that participants um, preferred to communicate with their food by voice and less by text. When asked about the perceived roles of the edible virtual agents while eating, we got a quite diverse set of answers. Some described it in a rather abstract way as a source of information. Others attributed more anthropomorphic traits to them. Only on rare occasions, participants talked about a death or killing of the food. And even in those cases, cases it was rather in a humorous way. So we state that the perceived skepticism of direct human to food interaction in the first interview study changed to playful exploration and interaction with food chatter in this study. This leads us directly to the discussion of our results, where we first of all want to emphasize that a fully functional prototype can lead to quite different results comparing to fictive uh, scenarios. Also, we want to address some further uh, design spaces. For example, it would be interesting to move from a smartphone-based uh, application to a more screenless approach, such as using augmented reality-based head-mounted glasses, projector mapping, or completely removing visual components and just evaluating voice interactions with food. Additionally, our edible virtual agents could be more proactive in reaching out to the user by asking questions um, after some idle interval or by commenting on certain situations. To enable such interactions, uh, a different use of sensors um, would be needed. Also, we haven't used any sound effects in our prototype, which could be explored further. Furthermore, uh, one could also think about other design paradigms such as Otherware by Hassan Salet Al um, and how they could apply to the augmentation of food and tableware. We also speculate in our paper how our concept might be applied in other contexts such as helping to address eating disorders or supporting group conversations. In addition, we are currently thinking about how to empower people to design and create such experiences themselves. Please take a look at our paper for more insights into different design spaces and limitations of our work. That's all for today. Thank you for your interest in our work. We also thank Andreas Wiebe and Laura Grünewald 
for their contributions to this work. I'm happy to discuss our work with you.